Hi friends. Today we're going to be continuing to take a look at this book, The Hard Sayings of Jesus by F.F. F. Bruce. It is such a good read and they really are hard sayings. It lives up to the title. Today's chapter is on hating one's parents. As you remember, Jesus has this saying. This is from Luke 14. He says, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. So that is a very shocking statement. What can he mean by that? Let's see what the author, author says. This is a hard saying in more senses than one. It's hard to accept and it is hard to reconcile it with the general teaching of Jesus. The attitude which it seems to recommend goes against the grain of nature, and it also goes against the law of love of one's neighbor, which Jesus emphasized and radicalized. If the meaning of neighbor must be extended so as to include one's enemy, it must not be restricted so as to include one's nearest and dearest. What does it mean, then? It means that just as property can come between us and the kingdom of God, so can family ties. The interests of God's kingdom must be paramount with the followers of Jesus, and everything else must take second place to them, even family ties. We tend to agree that there is something sordid about the attitude which gives priority to money-making over the nobler and more humane issues of life. But a proper care for one's family is one of those nobler and more humane issues. Jesus himself censured those whose Theologians had argued that people who had vowed to give God a sum of money, which they later discovered could have been used to help their parents in need, were not free to divert the money from the religious purposes to which it had been vowed in order to meet a parental need. This, he said, was a violation of the commandment to honor one's father and mother. Nevertheless, a man or woman might be so proud and bound up by family ties as to have no time or interest for matters of even greater moment. And there could be no matter of greater moment than of the kingdom of God. The husband and father was normally the head of the household, and he might look on his family as an extension of his own personality to the point where love for his family was little more than an extended form of self-love. Jesus strongly deprecated such an inward-looking attitude and used the strongest terms to express his disapproval of it. If hating one's relatives is felt to be a shocking idea, it was meant to be shocking. To shock the hearers into a sense of imperious demands of the kingdom of God. We know that in biblical idiom, to hate can mean to love less. When, for example, regulations are laid down in the Old Testament law for a man who had two wives, it is not necessary to suppose that he positively hates the latter wife. All that need to be meant is that he loves her less than the other and must be prevented from showing favoritism to the other's son when allocating his property. That's from Deuteronomy 21. So the RSV indicates that positive hatred is not intended by speaking of one's wife as the loved and the other one as the disliked, but the Hebrew word that's used is that which regularly means hatred. And it's rendered in the AV. So going to, skipping to the end here, it's just interesting. This is such an interesting um, idea that the authors bring up. Later in the New Testament period, when family life was acknowledged as the norm for Christians, it is laid down that, and this is from 1 Timothy, if anyone does not provide for his relatives and especially for his own family, he has disowned the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. There is no evidence in the Gospels that conflicts with this teaching of Jesus. But this needed no emphasizing for him. It is natural for men and women to make what provision they can for their nearest and dearest. Jesus' emphasis lay rather on the necessity of treating the kingdom of God as nearer and dearer still. Because of the natural resistance on the part of his hearers to accept this necessity— with literal seriousness, he insisted on it in the most arresting and challenging language at his command. So it's, it's a great perspective, right? So he, so essentially, I think the author is saying it's not about actually hating your relatives. That was kind of a figure of speech to kind of shock the hearer into realizing that 
um, what Jesus is calling us to do is to love the kingdom of God so much that it overshadows all other loves we have. And um, that might include family as well, it, that, that we hold the kingdom of God and our love for the Lord above all things. And that can um, that would make all of our other loves seem less in comparison. So even that, even when you um, interpret it that way, it still seems quite intense, but I think it's a calling that is beautiful and that that's really what Jesus wants us to work toward is to, above all else, seek first the kingdom of God. So may it be so for all of us, even as shocking as it can sound sometimes. Well, blessings to you and your family (laughs) this week, and I hope you have a great night. Blessings. Bye-bye.